Hello, thank you for tuning into this webinar featuring some basic introduction into the use of near infrared spectroscopy in the chemical industry. My name is Ryan Palermo and I am a market manager at Buki Corporation. Prior to that role, I served as an NIR application specialist at Buki. This webinar will touch base on the theory of NIR list some benefits of the technology for quality control, and highlight just a few applications. Very simply, spectroscopy is simply the study of the interaction of light with matter. The figure here shows the electromagnetic spectrum, ranging from high energy, high frequency gamma rays on the left to low energy, low frequency radio waves on the right. You'll see that NIR, or near-infrared light, falls just outside the range of the visible spectrum and is characterized by wavelengths of approximately 780 to 2500 nanometers. As this slide indicates, molecules are actually very dynamic. They undergo various bending, stretching, and other movements. Kind of sounds like a yoga class. The frequency of NIR light matches many of the molecular vibrations we are interested in when it comes to basic chemistry. Those include OH, CH, NH, and CO bonds. The absorption of NIR light by these functional groups enables us to get a spectral signature or a spectrum that we can use to do qualitative or quantitative analysis with. Next, let's see what that signal actually looks like. Here is a series of simple water methanol mixture spectra. The plot axes are absorbance over wavelength. These spectra illustrate the change in NIR signal that accompanies a change in the sample composition, with each color of the figure representing a different water methanol composition. To dig a little deeper, let's take a look at the red spectrum, that's at the bottom, which is pure methanol. There are some strong OH and CH bands, otherwise called peaks in absorbance intensity, around the 2000 to 2500 nanometer wavelength range. As we add water to a sample of pure methanol and get a mixture, we see the appearance of strong OH bands around 1500 and 1900 nanometers. The absorbance of those peaks grow proportional to the concentration of water in the water methanol mixture. We also see a proportional loss or decrease in the CH peak absorbance of the methanol as water is added. Because the absorbance values we measure in NIR spectroscopy are proportional to the concentration of those functional groups, we can again do both quantitative and qualitative measurements using these NIR data. Here's a quick list of the benefits of using NIR over traditional wet chemistry methods such as titrations or chromatography. First, NIR is fast and efficient. Measurement times are typically less than 30 seconds, sometimes much less than 30 seconds, and samples can be measured conveniently through glass or via immersion sampling using fiber optic probes. Moreover, non-contact sampling is achievable through various online NIR sensor configurations that can be integrated directly into process equipment or bypass loops. Second, NIR is non-destructive. Because a sample does not need to be dissolved or mixed with reactants, etc., it is left totally unaltered by the NIR measurement process. This means that the sample can be returned to production, set aside as a retain, or used for additional analyses. NIR is also cost effective and safe. Relative to traditional chemistry methods, very little analyst time is needed to do routine measurements, and no expertise is really required for data collection. When quality control data are required to release a batch or determine an endpoint, NIR can really speed up that process, reducing long QC wait times, as well as helping to reduce the risk of over-processing products 
in addition to more quickly freeing up equipment for a next batch. Moreover, any waste management costs associated with traditional wet chemistry is avoided, saving money as well as reducing analyst exposure to even more chemicals. Buki offers a full NIR solution, including hardware, software, and support. We have a variety of hardware options, including flexible systems optimized for liquids or solids in the lab, as well as ingress protected outline instrumentation and inline or online process control equipment. Our software includes simple graphical user interfaces and powerful tools for method development. We offer application support, on site and in house service, and offer a blog and various training programs to help communicate important information to our users. NIR measurements are prevalent across a wide range of products under the broad umbrella of the chemical industry. These images indicate some of the products that have published NIR applications associated with them. From petrochemical and personal care items to paint and coatings, there are a few key application themes consi consistent across these vastly different products. These themes are listed on the left side of the slide. Raw material qualification, intermediate or in-process testing, and finished product testing. Most, but not all, of the NIR applications include tests such as material identification, percent moisture or percent solvent determination, the, excuse me, the extent of polymerization, hydroxyl or acid number. Those are just, again, uh, consistent themes across a lot, but these are not all inclusive. Now we'll take a quick look at some of the more broadly applicable examples. Very often we find raw materials and even some intermediate or finished products are non-discrete white powders. Many millions of dollars have been lost to product recalls due to mislabeled containers of these raw materials being added to a process stream or even to a store shelf without knowledge of the error. The mislabeled bag or container may be a chemical analog of the intended material or something dramatically different altogether that can adversely affect the safety and certainly the quality of the manufactured product. NIR is a rather simple and straightforward tool for quick identity testing. This slide shows one illustration of three forms of glycerol with clear differentiation in the spectra due to the degree of esterification. NIR has shown usefulness in common applications such as differentiating isomers and crystalline forms of materials, chemically similar compounds, and various fatty acids as examples. The backdrop to how the identity test is being conducted is called cluster analysis. Simply, groups of sample spectra of known identity are used to train the NIR method development process. The spectra of those known samples are then translated from a multivariate point uh, in a graph of absorbance versus wavelength to a single point in this new multidimensional space. The cyan cluster observed in this plot is a representation of many spectra of a single material plotted in this new three-dimensional space. The red, green, blue, and magenta clusters represent different, unique raw material spectra included in the same three-dimensional plot. So in this example, we would have five unique raw materials in one plot. In routine analysis, you would receive a sample from a warehouse receiving, or maybe even from production, which you could then scan on the NIR and validate the identity of. If the new spectra falls into the cluster indicated by the label claim of the sample, then the label is correct and the quality of the material matches those samples that were used in the development of the NIR model. This example is illustrated by the small cyan circle falling into this, the large cyan cluster. 
If the sample spectra falls just outside of the cluster, as shown with the red dot relative to the red cluster, it may be likely that something is different about that sample, whether it's something to do with particle size or composition that would need examined further. If the sample spectra falls into the wrong cluster, as shown with the green dot falling into the magenta cluster, the sample has been mislabeled and the NIR software will, in this case, indicate the true identity of the sample. This type of analysis is a great quick check for incoming materials or even as an internal check for outgoing products. Any failure to pass an NIR identity test would warrant additional testing to validate the result. If the sample identity was deemed acceptable by traditional reference methods, then an NIR calibration model update would follow to allow for that sort of variation in future samples. One common quantitative application that I mentioned earlier is the determination of hydroxyl number, or the number of OH and groups per gram of a material. This measurement is important for determining stoichiometry or endpoints of many chemical applications. In fact, NAR is considered a standard practice by ASTM International for determining hydroxyl number of polyols for polyurethanes. The sketch shown is an attempt to simply illustrate a polymerization reaction where we see the number of free hydroxyl groups in the sample decrease along with the extent of polymerization. So just like we saw in the water methanol example, we would see a change in the OH peak absorbance intensities with changes in polymerization. Here's a second worked example for the concentration of nitrogen in nitrocellulose in the explosive industry. Through a series of steps, hydroxyl groups in cellulose are replaced by nitrates to produce nitrocellulose. Of course, these products need to be tightly controlled. The figure on the left shows spectra of five grades of nitrocellulose with varying degrees of nitrate substitution, ranging from 11.5 to 13.6%. The boxed regions of the figure show the corresponding reduction in OH absorption, or the reduction in the peak height related to OH absorption produced by the nitrate substitution. The spectra on the left were then used to create a mathematical model to predict or measure future samples. The reference versus predicted plot for that model is shown in the figure on the right. The traditional methods for nitrogen content determination are both complex and time consuming, requiring multiple hours to complete, whereas the NIR method was accomplished in less than a few minutes. The figure here shows a quality control chart with nitrogen content plotted over a sequence of samples. A comparison between the reference combustion and titration methods with NIR is also visualized. The NIR method, which is shown in the dark blue uh, plot, proved to be more precise than the combustion method shown in red and nearly equivalent to the titration method shown in yellow, despite the simpler and faster method execution of NIR. The NIR method was also found to be more robust by doing things like intentionally varying moisture in the calibration samples, the NIR mo uh, model was less sensitive to moisture content than either reference method. And finally, the larger sample size of the NIR method enabled more representative sampling than either reference technique. Are you interested in applying NIR to your routine sampling? feel free to reach out to us to talk to an application specialist about your workflow. We can then schedule a virtual demo to familiarize you with our solutions, or if your application is quite unique, we can schedule a feasibility study. For some additional discovery, check out our Buki.com website or application finder for additional application notes, case studies, and solution brochures or visit our NIR blog for some helpful tips and tricks. 
Please also note that Buki has a broad portfolio of laboratory products that go into the chemical industry, ranging from our well-known evaporation solutions to flash chromatography and particle engineering technologies such as spray drying, freeze drying, and encapsulation. We also offer online NAR as an integrated process control solution. Thank you so much for your time. You can contact us at us-sales at buki.com to reach sales or application support. You can also look for us and follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks again.